Hi, I'm Nathan Tallenbaum with these stories from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Madam Speaker. Now that President Barack Obama's 2011 budget for the nation has officially been released with funding for the Yakima Nuclear Waste Storage Project prominently absent, well, the breaking news section of ReviewJournal.com posted Monday the news that the Department of Energy filed notice with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission on its plan to suspend its pursuit of the construction licensing application. The Tuesday printed online editions have more, including a timeline showing the ups and downs of the controversial project down through the years. There's also a story on a potentially dangerous tritium leak reported this past weekend at a nuclear power plant in Vermont. Now, speaking of budgets, ahead of next Monday's State of the State speech from Nevada Governor Jim Gibbons, Gibbons Monday held a conference call with various local government leaders from around the state. You want to check Tuesday's printed online, RJ, for whatever details came out of that call, which was not available to the public or the media. Now, there's been speculation that the governor's agenda for the as yet undeclared special session of the state legislature will include a call for cities and or counties to cough up more of their own money to help the state patch up its nearly billion dollar budget hole. Turns out it's going to be February of 2011, and not this month, that the six defendants charged in the shooting death of Las Vegas Metro Police Officer Trevor Nettleton will go on trial. Tuesday's printed online editions of the RJ have the story behind the postponement. Vegas Land columnist Doug Elfman wrote Monday of a wide-ranging conversation with Donald Trump. If you don't have your Monday paper, it's still available online. Well, Doug's here right now with a look at his Tuesday column. Hey, Doug. Hey, if you check out my column in uh, Tuesday's Review Journal, I've got an interview with Carlos Santana. Santana is back at the Hard Rock uh, starting Wednesday for a good uh, couple of weeks. And uh, once again, he tells me a lot of uh, fun, hippie stuff about uh, how to live and how to live nicely and positivity. Uh, but he also says that he's moving to Las Vegas. So I talked to him a little bit about that. That's in Tuesday's Review Journal. Thank you, sir. All things Elfman are at lvrj.com slash Elfman. Well, you're seeing the annual February 2nd media barrage from Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, as the handlers of a groundhog yank him out of his hole in the ground and tell us that whether it's sunny or cloudy, Phil may or may not have seen his shadow with that ensuing hubbub about six more weeks of winter or spring right around the corner. You may or may not know there is a distinct lack of groundhogs here in the southwestern United States. And for the last 10 years, a partnership of county and federal agencies have been promoting a Mojave Desert tortoise as a better prognosticator of spring-like weather for our part of the nation. This photograph shows Mojave Max on Groundhog Day 2009, snuggled in his burrow, as are most all of his fellow desert tortoises. There's also an annual contest already underway for local school students to guess the exact date and time that Max will emerge from his brumation. Anyway, check the tortoise's website for details, mojavemax.com. Well, sort of weather-related, that story about the tortoise and the groundhog, your actual forecast, a mix of sun and clouds for now, leading to slight chances for rain come Wednesday and Thursday. Temps expected to stay pretty much right where they've been. Highs a degree to either side of 60, overnight lows in the vicinity of 40. And we'll know more about these chances for rain as storm systems get closer, though right now, uh, the National Weather Service in Las Vegas not expecting much, if any, accumulation here. For breaking news 24-7, you're at the right spot. ReviewJournal.com.